The Type S Scout Ship is a spacefaring vessel from the tabletop role-playing game Traveler. In 2021, the folks at Second Dynasty secured a license to design a 3D printable version of the Type S, and it was released in a crowdfunding project on My Mini Factory in July, along with some variants and minis designed for 28mm scale play. Second Dynasty sent me the base model to print, which I did at 70% scale. On the plus side, printing at this smaller scale reduced the filament requirement from about two rolls to about one and cut the print time in half. And the print time is significant, taking roughly two or three weeks depending on how heavily you load the print bed. The downside to me printing it at 70% scale is that everything came out pretty fragile and I lost a lot of the mechanical functionality like the sliding doors and landing gear legs. After seeing how mine came out, I basically had three choices. Reprint the whole thing at the proper intended scale, chuck the whole thing and not do this review, or just push forward with my faulty print job and supplement the video with pictures of other people's much better prints. I decided to go for this last option. The Type S Scout slash Courier goes back possibly to the very first version of Traveler and it can be found in most subsequent versions. I suspect that's why Second Dynasty chose to license this one first. As far as its in-game dimensions, it's supposed to be a 100 ton hull with jump 2 and 2G acceleration with 4 staterooms and just one hard point. This hard point almost always has a turret depicted on it. The ship is 37.5 meters long, 24 meters wide, and 7.5 meters tall with a tripod landing pylon system. The cargo bay has space for a 4 ton vehicle and by default that's a simple air raft, deployable from the aft starboard bay door. The in-game cost to fill up the fuel tank on this ship is 20,000 credits if using refined fuel, or 4,000 credits for unrefined fuel. Imperial scout bases or way stations provide refined fuel for free. Life support amounts to 4,000 credits a week to maintain. Routine maintenance is about 27,000 credits performed maybe once a year. As far as generating an income with this ship, the extremely limited passenger and cargo capacity make it a bleak prospect and the single mounted weapon hardpoint makes it a bit of a sitting duck in terms of battle engagements. This ship was intended as a scout vessel and there's not too much room for flexibility around that. Second Dynasty recommends printing with silver filament using an 8% infill, 5 bottom layers, 7 top layers, and 2 wall layers. The largest part is 147 millimeters at its widest so if you have a printer with a smaller print bed than that then you'll either need to split this part or print at a smaller scale. There are a lot more print specifications provided by Second Dynasty including wind add supports and general advice like how to ensure bed adhesion. It's worth mentioning here that Second Dynasty has a Discord server with a very active community that discusses printer tips and issues and there is a second affiliated Discord server called Zormer's support channel that hosts all 3D related printing issues. Everyone on both servers is insanely helpful and friendly. Like I mentioned earlier, the ship is scaled for 28mm play and that gives it a total length of 64 centimeters or 25 inches. And this takes about 2.5 kilograms or 2.5 rolls of filament. Generally speaking, a roll of filament costs between $18 and $25. Since I printed mine at 70% scale, really just to get the model done faster and take up less space, I used a little over one roll of filament and it ended up being 18 inches in length. So unfortunately, 70% scale means that none of the doors really slide because it ends up being too tight and the landing gear pylons turned out to be too brittle for me to actually use. In conclusion, I recommend printing all Second Dynasty ships at full 100% scale. That way you don't lose out on things like sliding doors and retractable landing gears and everything is just that much sturdier. And maybe most importantly, you get most of the detail that the modelers work so hard to incorporate in the design. I actually did print another one of Second Dynasty ships at full scale and plan on doing a video of it and I have to say, even though it took over a month to print, the end result is pretty stunning and provides a very table ready, playable terrain environment. Just to walk you through the ship real quick, the front of it has two window ports. There are a number of ways to create clear windows. Some folks print with clear filament or resin. While I would suggest just finding some thick clear plastic from food or product packaging and cutting it to size. Then you have to carefully glue the edges and carefully place it where it needs to go. I didn't do any of that for this video so I have gaping holes where there should be cockpit windows. When you pop the top off, you get full access to the main deck. 
At the fore, there is the cockpit, which has seats for two. The actual model comes with either an upright or reclined version of the chair, and there are also peg holes so that you can adjust how close to the console you want the seat. I've seen a lot of folks print the ship out in FDM, but use resin for the console in order to retain the maximum amount of detail. Behind the cockpit door, there is a hallway leading to a bathroom, a life support closet, and the four staterooms. All of the furniture and walls print separately and then snap in, but since I printed mine so small, the little slots were too small, so I had to modify the walls a bit and then glue them in permanently, which is actually fine. It makes for a sturdier model having stuff glued together, but if you do that, make sure you get all of your painting done first. After the staterooms, there is the crew commons. If you imagine yourself as a crew member on the ship, you would realize at this point this is a very small vessel. It's so small that the commons area has to use fold down tables and chairs that fold back up into the wall when not in use. From a lifestyle perspective, it's pretty awful and you wouldn't want to live on this ship long term. From a sculpting and printing perspective, this is a really cool touch. The folding tables and benches print as one piece each and have the hinge functionality, but I did run into quality and functionality issues at 70% scale. There are a couple of tiny rooms here also accessible from the commons, the vault and the ship's locker. Going past the central iris door here, there is the drive compartment, which is home to the engines and the insides of the two boosters at the aft of the ship. These engines actually print as separate parts that all snap together nicely and have some of the most remarkable detail out of the whole model. There are two control consoles in the back near the two boosters. Just above the drive compartment is where the so-called power plant is housed. This room has a removable iris hatch in the floor. The entire floor of the drive compartment, engines included, actually comes out and reveals a lower engineering area. The top of the ship has one hard point with a single turret by default. This turret does rotate all the way around and has tilt functionality. And at the bottom, there are three sets of double doors where fully articulated landing pylons fold in and out. From a gaming perspective, you're probably going to have this ship sitting in the center of the table, either as a visual centerpiece or occasionally to help visualize where characters are on a ship, especially if there's a boarding event of some sort. Either way, without the landing pylons deployed, the ship leans forward unevenly and wobbles to either side, so you'll probably have the landing gears deployed at all times if you're using this at the table. The outer hole at the aft is pretty interesting, not because of the twin boosters, but because you can buy a light kit that fits perfectly into the model, which lights up the boosters. I've left a link below to everything, including this lighting kit if you want to go the extra mile. Pretty much the only way I was able to organize the printing and assembly of this model was through a program that Second Dynasty offers called Deck Designer. The copy of Deck Designer that they provided me had the Type S Scout ship preloaded on it, and I was able to click through and reference all of the parts and how they fit together. When cycling through the steps, the program actually has pre-programmed animations and viewpoints to give me the optimal point of view without having to fly around in the 3D space manually. Also by clicking on any part, I get the part name. Deck Designer is pretty interesting because it allows you to load any 3D printable models or STLs into it and play around in a prototype space before actually committing to printing anything. And as far as Second Dynasty models, all of the major ships that they've created thus far have already been loaded into the program. At the time of this recording, the Type S ship is in late pledge stage at My Mini Factory and has seven or so different pledge tiers. At the base levels, you can get just the Type S Scout ship itself or the 3D printable minis that have been sculpted exclusively for this ship by Popsicles. Some of these minis are the crew and others are Varger Raiders or Pirates. As the tiers go up, you can get access to all the turret variants, which are easy enough to pop on and off on the hard point at the top of the ship, and different air rafts which are stored in one of the cargo bays. There are also some different variations of noses that can be swapped out on the tip of the ship. The completed stretch goals are almost too many to list here. There are additional crew poses, printable ship decals, alternate thrusters, cargo, extra partitions, and alternate hull parts that provide airlock doors. There's also the option to buy Second Dynasty's older ships, which each come with a dizzying array of alternate components so that you can build your own custom variant. As you might have guessed, the ecosystem of 3D printable shipbuilding that Second Dynasty has created at this point goes really deep. Naturally, you have a very excited and dedicated community around these models at this point too. It should be mentioned that the scout ship and a number of the stretch goals are already completed and ready for download as soon as you decide to pledge. All right, so here are my thoughts on the 3D printable Traveler Type S Scout Ship by Second Dynasty. 
Cons. Technical. If you're just getting started on the hobby of 3D printing, it's highly recommended that you don't jump into printing second dynasty ships. The only exception to that advice is if you're already used to complex project management and assembly or physical puzzles. It's just complex, and coupled with printer problems that just naturally come with the hobby, it's likely to be too frustrating for a complete beginner, or really anyone that's not in the mood for a few setbacks. The cost. I don't really have any issue with the cost on this model or the, on the filament required to print all this stuff, but there's more than just money at stake. When you set out to print a two foot long spaceship for your gaming table, you're committing the $75 or whatever, but there's also the three to four weeks of printing and assembling, one or two weeks of painting, and finally, the storage space required if you're not using or displaying the ship. Pros, extremely faithful model. Ben Mowbray and the other modelers who collaborated with him to make this ship did a remarkable job of taking old schematics and floor plans of the Type S from old Traveler books and bringing it to 3D life. I largely skipped over the specifics of each room and all the little design considerations that went into the ship, but I know that an extreme amount of care went into keeping the model as close to the dimensional as well as the technical limitations and specifications derived from the Traveler rulebooks. And the ship is full of more flourishes and details not found in any of the books. It's the little details on the walls and the floor that really make this feel like a real starship in your hands. Ready for 28mm play. Technically Traveler was originally scaled for 15mm play, but the overwhelmingly popular scale these days is 28mm, which is incidentally easier to print and paint. This ship is scaled for 28mm, which means you can use all of your other scatter terrain and minis if you've been building a library at that scale. Again, I don't think this ship would see heavy use at the table from a tactical perspective, but it would be quite luxurious to have it sitting in the middle of the table if your gaming group is using this ship as their ship. Or you can force them to use this ship as their character ship because you spent like two months printing and painting the thing. Extras give it life. The base ship by itself is pretty cool, but when you start throwing in crew members and turret and hull upgrades and an air raft, the whole thing starts to take on a life of its own. I think for a lot of Second Dynasty fans, these ships aren't even primarily for playing RPGs at the table with other people. It's more about just enjoying the designs and having one's own imagination sparked by all the possible adventures that a ship like this could encounter. The extras that come with the ship help to fuel that imagination. I have yet to find another company or sculptor that is doing modular 28mm scale starship design that's 3D printable. These ships are kind of the ultimate in sci-fi tabletop terrain all said and done, and you could tell that they're created from a place of passion and love. Obviously, any ship's floor plan can be printed on paper and put on the table for everyone to see, but imagine just for a moment showing up to your game as the GM with one of these 3D printed scout ships, putting it down on the table and telling everybody, okay, this is where you start. Thanks as always for watching. This is Dave signing off. See ya.